Ian, thanks very much for, for talking to us. Just want to start, in terms of recording, uh, yours must be one of the most prolific careers of the last 45 years because uh, I sort of lost count of the number of albums you've released. 45 plus, do you know how many it's actually? I don't know exactly. I've never really stopped to add them all up and if we're talking about individual studio or live albums that have been released yeah. then it's probably closer to 50 if we're talking about best ofs and, and small collections you know I did my notebook series and I did my orphans and outcasts series yeah. uh, so if you're including those two then we're probably nearer to 60 <laughs> yes yeah. because yeah. yeah. with such a body of work I always wonder how artists like yourself then settle on a repertoire when you go out on tour. Yeah, well, I don't. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Basically, I don't. Um, and every time I change the format that I play in, then I have to change the repertoire too. For this trip, I ultimately chose 30 songs that I can pick from. Mm -hmm. If I'm realistic, maybe 25 of them are, are working. Yeah. Um, when I play in uh, my duo with, uh, I play with a Dutch piano player, Egbert Derricks. When I play in the duo, then we dip from an almost completely different repertoire, and we then have about 35 songs we can choose yeah. from. Is yours um, a photographic memory, or do you need no. to go back and I, revisit some yeah, songs that might have gone yeah. lost in this time? I, I have to, yeah, I have to keep reminding myself all the time. In fact, at this, at this moment in time, I have a book on stage with me. It's more like a safety net. I mean, I, I, I know the songs, and I know that I know the songs, but it's a habit that I've, that I've gotten into, just uh, putting the book there and turning the pages, and it's a, it's a little visual thing, too. You always seem to be either recording or tour, uh, that you're not someone that seems to rest on the laurels, that it's not looking at the past, it's sort of Absolutely. looking to the future. Absolutely. There's, there's, there, there are still so many things that I want mm. to do. After the first Fairport album, I thought, fantastic, I've made an album, I'm a happy man. If I never get to make another one, I'm a happy man. And then, after five albums, you kind of reflect on that and think, well, it's, it's going quite well. I think uh, yeah. I might get to make a couple more. And at this point in time, I've realized that the only thing that can stop me is me, for whatever reason. Um, so I just keep making plans at the moment. I'm making plans to do an album with Pyramid, which was my first band after moving to London in 1966. Mm -hmm. If I could take you back to those, those early days, there was a period, about a five, six year period, where there was the early Fairport albums, Matthew Southern Comfort, Plain Song, and Solar Career, it all seemed to happen quite quickly. Mm -hmm. um, did you feel that you were sort of like still looking for your musical niche in moving from one to the other, or were you quite happy with the way that was progressing? I didn't f necessarily feel that I was looking for that. I've always felt that I've been looking for the complete Ian Matthews, mm. the songwriter and the performer, the singer. I've been looking for that entire package to take shape. And my way of trying to find it is to just create as many different genres for myself as I possibly can. One of which was about five, six years ago when uh, you released the Joy Mining album. Yes. Uh, now, for I people think... that knew you from the early <laughs> days, that might have come as a bit of a surprise. Yeah, but yeah. Where did that sort of like jazz love influence or interest it's, come from? My love of jazz has been there for a long, long, long time. Since the mid 60s. I only began to pursue it as a possibility for myself in the early 80s. I tried uh, getting together and writing with a jazz piano player and it didn't really work out which to me just said that I wasn't ready for it. Actually I tried in the 70s, I made an album called Hit and Run that, that had sort of vague jazz leanings to mm -hmm. it it's always been something that fa that's fascinated me. I've always wanted to be able to write more jazzy songs and perform in a jazz arena. And uh, when I moved down to the south of Holland to Horst, where I live, I met this man, Egbert Derricks, and yeah. he had his own quartet, the Syrian Quartet. We hit it off. Uh, we started writing together. And the next logical move was to make an album with the combination of the quartet and myself. Yeah. 
it was at that point that I realized, and, and also because of his encouragement, that I realized that this is something I can do. And was there anything with your collaboration with him that you took away and then fed into your own solo recordings th- and I, writing? I, I think so. I mean, the only solo recording I've done since working with him is the new one, mm-hmm. the one that The Art of Obscurity that's coming out in January. Yeah. Um, but I think if you listen to that, you'll hear two or three things on there that... Uh, that I wrote all by myself that really echo the work I've been doing with him. Yeah. So it's, it wasn't until I began to write for this album that I realized how much an effect he, he's had on, uh, on my thinking, my uh, vision of a song. But isn't that in some ways what keeps a, a songwriter fresh and looking for new ideas by collaborating perhaps outside your comfort zone. I, I think so. There are a lot of songwriters that, that won't embrace that, though. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of songwriters that won't step outside their, their comfort zone. Um, but for me, a comfort zone is, is just a barbed wire fence, and I like to try and climb over it and see yeah. what's, uh, what's available on the other side. And this was happening around about the same time that you were recording and touring again as Plain Song, mm-hmm. and then you ended the decade with a new Matthew Southern cover yeah, album. Yeah. Was that sort of unfinished again, business? Again, that... It was unfinished business, yeah. I know I've been well documented in uh, talking about my my distaste of the original band. I never felt the original band fulfilled my expectations, and I, ne- I never thought the original band was capable of fulfilling my expectations. Um, the way I dealt with it was mm, youthful, uh, immature... Um, but it was what it was. In recent years, I started thinking again about Matthew's Sudden Comfort and what could it have been had I stayed? What could it have been had I got rid of the pedal steel and brought something else in? Uh, what could it have been if I hadn't walked on my back and walked away from it? And the more I thought about it, the more I, I wanted to deal with it and the more I wanted to experiment. So I put together a group of musicians that I thought would echo what I was hearing in my head and um, I, I love that album again it has it has vague jazzy leanings to it but it still has the big harmonies that Southern Comfort originally had and it, yeah. it still has that slight singer songwriter I want to say country edge but that might turn people off one final thing I'd like to ask you with all the experience that you have writing, recording, Mm. touring, if you were to meet your 20, 25-year-old self with the experience you've got and give yourself one piece of advice, what would that be? I would advise him to figure out a way to get out there with the the material at hand and play as a solo artist the, the way Richard Thompson did. Richard figured that stuff out very very early on and consequently he built himself a really really strong grassroots following and that is something that I that I never did Um, I made an album I put a band together I went out toured on the album and then I went home and I sat around until time to make another album and I think if I made any big mistake in my career I could point my finger at that and say that's the mistake I made and if I were 25 years old again I would I would learn to get out there with an acoustic guitar and uh, present myself just as a songwriter and build that following from the beginning. Ian, thanks very much for talking to us. You're welcome. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks a lot.